Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here on yet another glorious Bagel Sunday. Although, weather-wise, not so glorious. It's nasty out. It's raining. It's 52 degrees. Blah. I have been a busy little monkey over this past week because I was trying to get as much shit done for day job as I possibly could so that I could take the rest of the week off and not stress about it. So Wednesday, like a dumbass, I scheduled calls even though I had the day off. Plus I was getting phone calls from a lot of people and emails and all kinds of shit. So I pretty much worked Wednesday, most of it. And then I finally was like, okay, I'm done. Then we met up with Maggie and her parents and another cousin. We just went over to the hotel where, where Maggie's parents were staying and, and we ended up getting pizza and, and hanging out for a few hours. A lot of fun. Thursday, obviously, Thanksgiving day, my queen made a hell of a meal and I ate a lot of it. Woke up Friday and just did a bunch of other shit. Like we did a bunch of crap and, and you know, did this, that, and the other thing. Plus we ended up meeting up with Maggie and her parents again. We went out for dinner and introduce them to Palones because I guess Maggie's friends don't like Mexican food. So she was jonesing for it. So that was a lot of fun. Yesterday at first was not fun because I woke up with a migraine with the auras. Now I thought I was having ocular migraines, but when I read up on them again, it turns out that an ocular migraine is when it only affects one eye. Mine goes across both eyes, the vision and everything. So I am, have been experiencing migraines with auras. I mean, I literally woke up and was laying there in bed and I couldn't freaking see my iPad. And I was like, man, my eyes are really bad today. I can't see shit. And then I'm like, wait a minute, am I, am I having a freaking ocular migraine? And you know, I went through and realized that that's exactly what was happening. So I laid there for a while um, and, and went through the whole, you know, you lose your vision, you see the little psychedelic amoeba and all that shit. Went through and did all that, got through all that, and then just got up like regular day. Now, most of the times, and, and I'll knock on wood here and say that I, since my first, like, two migraines, especially the first one, and I've said this before, the first migraine I ever experienced, I didn't understand what was going on. It was like the full-on migraine with the auras, but then the pain oh my god it was like someone tore the top of my skull off and was pissing acid on my brain it was brutal just brutal and and i was down for the count and every little noise every little sound every little movement was like searing white hot pain it was brutal so glad i don't experience those really much any anymore i just get these migraines with the auras and then what happens is that i don't get the pain i might have a headache you know, but I mean, welcome to my world. I always have a headache. So I, I wasn't too worried about it. But then what happens is that as the day goes on, I'm exhausted. Like it takes a lot out of me. In true monkey fashion, I was like, well, I'm not going to freaking lay here and just whimper all damn day. So after a week of, of eating some pretty big meals and, and not being the greatest, like we had pizza, we went out for Mexican, you know, things like that. I decided that I needed to do to be healthier starting yesterday. So she got up and she made herself her breakfast and then I had oatmeal with fruit and, and you know all the good stuff in it and some coffee. And then I wanted to get some more caffeine into my system. So we went to three ships on the way out of town and we went to the Williamsburg Antique Mall, which is a pretty big place. She even says that by the time she gets to the end of it, she's like, she's done, you know, we need to go. And then we drove to a, a world market because there's not one anywhere near us. There's only that one and maybe one more f further out. You know, we got some stuff and, and I got some big soba bowls because our bowls, while big, aren't big enough to, to accommodate something like that. Then we came home and ate Thanksgiving dinner again, huge Thanksgiving dinner, and then just chilled for a little bit until Sven Gulli came on. And then we sat on the couch and watched Sven Gulli. But all day, and especially like last night laying there, I was just exhausted. Like I didn't even want to shower. And that's a huge thing for me because like I have this like compulsion to shower before I go to bed. And I didn't want to, but I was like, then I'll just lay here and I'll feel gross and dirty. And then I'll have to get up and do it anyway. So maybe the hot water will do me some good, which it usually does. So I, I took a nice hot shower and did my yoga stretching and everything. And then I laid there and watched videos. Now it's convenient because I want to decorate today for Christmas. 
but I also need to rearrange the garage to accommodate the new garage fridge that's coming in the middle of the week. I guess I'm going to be home today, which is fine because it's not like I need to go anywhere anyways, but I have been jonesing to go out and take pictures. And now that uh, like downtown or, you know, town center is decorated, you know, I was going to go there and take pictures, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it in the pissing rain. So, all right, uh, the bagel should be done by now. So I'm going to go get those and we're going to snarf. Bagels gotten. Time to snarf. On a side note, I got a rather nice comment from somebody that apparently watches my videos and they commended me for, for my consistency and, and doing a really good job with this channel. I like comments like that. It's very nice to hear that. But I'm home now and I'm going to go tear up this bagel. So uh, yeah, let's go do that. Okay, kids, here we go. I have just spent the last, I don't know, couple hours going through this garage and completely redoing it, which wasn't easy because I'm lazy. There's so much crap here and I had to find a good way to put it all somewhere that made sense. I hate clutter and I hate moving shit and pretending that I'm cleaning clutter, but I'm just moving one clutter pile to a new clutter pile. So I went through everything, starting over there in the shelving system, pulling stuff. Well, I had to pull the Christmas decorations, but I have an entire shelf laid out for that. It's empty and ready to accept Christmas stuff when we come back, plus the little cubby hole in this, back in there, and I'll show you this in a second, has space for the tree when we're done with it, and everything should be good to go. Now, the whole reason that I did this was because I bought a garage fridge. Call me first world if you want to, I don't give a shit. I need another fridge. We have so much stuff, and there's so much stuff that we want to do that we can't do because we just don't have enough room. And when I got all new appliances for my kitchen, we were excited to get a new fridge, and we picked one that we thought was going to be good. And I'm not saying that it's not good, but it's just not good enough. We love that it has the ice cube dispenser and the water. Monkey's drinking water today. You know, the cat loves getting ice cube fresh water every day, multiple times a day. And it, yes, we've got a lot of stuff in there, but it is not laid out as well as the old broken fridge that we got rid of. What it gets down to is we just don't have enough room for everything, and there's no method to the madness of what's in there. Everything is just shoved wherever we can find room for it, and that just doesn't work. I much preferred the way the old fridge was laid out, and it had more drawers and all that kind of stuff. I bought add-on like shelving drawers, and even that, it's just not enough. The bottom line is I bought this damn fridge. And I, when I went out to research them, I actually saw some something on a sign that said garage ready. And I was like, garage ready? What does that mean? It turns out that you have to get a fridge that's or a freezer that's made to be in a garage that can put up with the extremes of temperature. So, you know, a garage in the summertime, if you live someplace, I don't know, like Virginia Beach, where it can get hot as balls in here or in the winter, when it gets colder, it has to be able to deal with that. And I guess just a normal fridge might not. So I didn't want to go out and spend $700 on a freaking refrigerator and have it die in a year. So I ended up getting a garage ready one. Now, the nice thing is, is that I forgot that I'm a veteran and I can use the Navy Exchange. And I got an ad from the Navy Exchange and sh it showed that they had linked several of the other manufacturers that you could buy through but still get Navy Exchange pricing. Home Depot was one of them. So I had picked out a fridge that I wanted and the Black Friday sale put it, you know, I mean, it was a little bit more than I thought that I should spend or wanted to spend. You gotta have what you gotta have, so you gotta spend what you gotta spend. Well, it turns out that I could get that fridge through the Navy Exchange, so I got it even cheaper than the sale price at Home Depot, in addition to the fact that I'm getting free shipping, which I think I'd get anyways, but most importantly, I don't pay tax when I buy through the Navy Exchange. So I saved myself quite a bit of money by doing it that way. It's going to be delivered, I think, on Wednesday. So I was like, shit, I got to make room in there. And I knew where I wanted it, back against this wall, but I had this big shelf system there with all kinds of crap on it. I'm just going to stop talking and I'm going to show you. Oh, I'll talk while I show you. So hold on a second. Okay, so here's from the extreme corner of the garage by the door. So there we have Maddie in all her glory. And behind there, I have a second shelf system. And then over here, I have a wooden system built that's holding like all the shovels and shit like that. I got my bikes hanging back there. I've got all these, you know, like I, the uh, microwave that we had to buy when ours broke. 
the air conditioning unit that I get in trouble for every year for using, shit like that. So I got all that stuff on there. And then there's the old iMac, which I still have yet to smash. This area was really bad. I got it all done. I got my jack back there and the, and the compressor and all that kind of stuff. The weight system that I never use, in addition to you know the hangy thing, but I do hang on this thing to stretch. Uh, for now, the cat's thing's out and the, and the ball, but th those will be pushed over there eventually. So here's the shelving system, and I've got this like jam-packed, with the exception of that entire shelf that's for the Christmas stuff, up there, completely redone. I had those stupid uh, patio furniture cushions that we don't use because our patio furniture sucks now. It's all rusted out. But all that is up above there. You can't really see it. I only added a couple more things up there. But the most important thing was this right here is where the fridge is going. So I measured. I've got plenty of space before I hit those shelving brackets. And I have plenty of space over this way so that it accommodates. And then I'm going to have the door swing open from this side over to here. And that way we can walk in the door, pop in, pop the door open, get a drink, do whatever, and be good to go. This is the spot where the Christmas tree will go. And then I will also have the cat cage in there as well. And then the little ball will likely go under here, but we'll see. Uh, this is just all ammo because I didn't want it upstairs. I thought to myself, if my house catches on fire, it catches on in my bedroom office. I mean, my, not my bedroom, my office. It heats those bullets up and starts shooting. There's no way out for us except through a hail of bullets. Now it's down here in the garage. So I had to put these little ladders, like the big heavy ass one there and the step ladder that I always use over there. I did have those hanging on the wall behind that shelf. And then I'm, I had to take everything off the shelves because as you can see by the little holes down in there, it was compressed down into this exercise foam and there was no way for me to pull it out with all the weight that was on there. So I had to take everything off, move it over there, re-put everything back on. And I did take stuff off and put it over on the shelf system over there. And then I decided I didn't like that. And I put it pretty much all back over here uh, with the exception I left the top almost empty because there was a lot of crap on there that just didn't need to be there. So anyways, this is everything. I didn't touch any of this stuff over here with the exception of putting the step ladder up. Now, what I'm gonna do, and as you can see, you know, I've got my light there, my SL60 in the softbox angled over here to do this, but it reflects off the TV, so I shut it off while I was filming. Anyways, I think what I might do is along there, I might go out and get a, uh, like a nice workbench I don't know, so that I can do work on it because I don't have anywhere to do work when I come out here. So if I'm sawing or hammering or building some kind of special project, I can't do anything there. So I might put it there um, so that I have a place to do shit. And then I have my little charging station down here. So, oh, it's done. So I was charging the, the drill battery, which was completely dead. And that's it. So that's the way it looks right now. Okay, I'm just gonna leave the big light on. It's really bright, as you can see. And I, again, I turned off the softbox light because it was reflecting off the TV. I put that up here just because I got another TV. You know, I moved shit around basically and didn't know what to do with this one. This was the one I think that was in the, in the kitchen, the kitchen, Jesus, that was in the living room. And then I ended up getting a 4k TV in the living room because for some odd reason, I never had a 4k TV except for the gigantic one in my office. So I'm also thinking about redoing the office and that I had thought about taking the magical drawers out and putting them here underneath this, which is still an option. I still might do that. It's a lot of space up there. And if I get rid of that and get rid of the other table and I can bring that down here too, and then move the editing station over by my desk so that I have an L like I have now, but have it with the, with the editing computer and everything on there, then all my computer shit is in one spot. And then I can just use that entire length of the wall to film on if I want. But that's gonna be a huge project because that may involve painting as well. And I just don't have it in me to paint right now. So, okay, I don't know. Let me know what you think or if you have any ideas that are within reason. I can't go out and spend you know $10,000 to have my garage completely redone. Uh, again, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out because I was thinking if I moved that shelf over here and had this side filled with stuff that it would feel too small, but it, it actually isn't that bad. 
And, and the more I think about it, the more instead of buying a workbench, I think I might just end up moving the, the magical drawers down here. And, um, and that way I'm not spending money on something else. Uh, it'll give me a place to put stuff and, and you know work on it if I need to. Enough blathering. Uh, that's all you get for today. So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, and remember, kids, forward and up.